Oh, it's here, baby. Welcome to the My Guys episode, but it's not just the My Guys episode today. It is the final day of the UDK for Life giveaway, the ultimate draft kit. And if you don't have the ultimate draft kit or you don't know what it is, it is the one tool you need to dominate your draft. We have our historically accurate tiered-based rankings. We have blurbs on every player. We have 100-plus video player profiles breaking down who are the sleepers, the values, the breakouts, the busts. You are going to love it. And if you get it today by 6.30 p.m. Eastern, you are automatically entered in to win a UDK for life forever. And if you write it with a quill, you can bequeath it to others. So check it out and get all the information you need at ultimatedraftkit.com. And now, let's get to them, my guys. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, August 16th. Okay, it's my guy's day. Yeah, there it is. We didn't do this yesterday? We did not. Gotcha. The comments the comments were, uh, they, there were some that were, they were expecting it. Yeah, I saw some correctly predict that today's episode was going to be the my guy's episode. Uh, nailed it. Impressive. Ten years. Ten years of My Guy episodes. In fact, Kyle right. Kyle grabbed a hot stat. We have had, uh, so, you know, today we'll reveal three names each for the My Guys episode, but there have been 90 before today's episode. 91 if you count Dante Pettis and what happened that year. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we have selected My Guys from every NFL team over the nine years, except for one. Do you know the one? I do. I saw it. The Sorry, Atlanta Falcons. Falcons. Does that change today? Nice, nice, Mike. Stay tuned. Uh, Jason said it at the top. If you if you were watching him on YouTube, the UDK for Life giveaway is today. So this afternoon we're going to be live um, everywhere. So you can find us um, on YouTube or or we'll be live on on X. And if you pick up the ultimate draft kit before. Uh, the end of that live stream, we're going to give away the, the UDK for life. We're going to give away a signed Justin Jefferson jersey. We're going to answer your questions uh, live. And so you can pick up the UDK at ultimatedraftkit.com. Very excited about today. Big expectations. Culmination of a long off season as we get ready to go uh, for the regular season. It's also the day we hold our breath for injuries. Oh, I know. For the rest of the preseason, I mean, there have been uh, – we all put out different messages on social media asking people to guess are my guys. I gave a big hint. Technically, nobody got it. But also, technically, you kind of did because there have been some pivots over the last week, some due to injury, and so uh, it's going to be really, really exciting to hear these today. But first, let's jump into some news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. We did have a preseason game last night. The Patriots and the Eagles. I got to see a decent amount of this game, including every snap from Drake May, the rookie quarterback, and um, Jacoby Brissett looked a little bit shaky. He had a, a end zone interception, and Drake May had some plays that, for the first time on film, as an NFL player, looked like some of the stuff we wanted to see from college, in my opinion, including the rushing capability. He had a read option place to score a touchdown, made some good intermediate throws, found Jalen Polk on the outside, who looked, uh, I use the word saucy. I like, like he, it. He could move. We all know what it means. Yeah. So yeah, when you got the sauce, 
uh, you know, it was nice to see that. Um, Gerard Mayo said that he was making strides, and the reports right now is the competition is not over. Jake May was making strides. Correct. Because there was a, a there was a typo on a report earlier that that Gerard Mayo said that Mayo was making strides. It's just one letter. It's just one yeah, letter, man. You know all about that. If you <laughs> if you just miss a couple of letters, it, it shouldn't matter. So that he was much. reporting that he, as a coach, was making big progress. Well, well, I, ho I hope he is. You know, first time head coach, you want to be making progress too. We don't give enough credit to the fact that most coaches can progress and hopefully become better as just coaches, don't. as people. And then there's Dennis Allen. So has, um, a, has a coach ever, uh, Deion Sanders, like referred to themselves in the third person? Outside of Sanders? A, a coach. Well, Deion Sanders is a coach, yeah. Mike. Prime oh, time, prime an NFL coach. Okay, I'm a coach. He's a coach right now. College smallage. That's in the back of my head. It's college smallage. That's right. But, like, imagine Bill Belichick up there. Like, Belichick did a great job today. <laughs> that would... That's that's too much. Maybe maybe in about ten years, the next wave. It of will head be coaches. Deion Sanders when he's an NFL coach. He will Deion Sanders. Um, good news. Sean McVay said Matthew Stafford is expected to return to practice next week. Uh, I mean that is that is phenomenal news. There are too many very expensive, highly important fantasy options for the Rams to not have Stafford, and that's that's one of the biggest risks with drafting them. Like you look at Puka Nakua or Cooper Cup and you think the risk is, oh, I'm not sure which one is, is number one. You know, the risk is not each other. The risk is Stafford's health because if Stafford goes down at least the first half of the year before Jimmy Garoppolo is the backup, then that is just devastating. Ouchie wah wah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. 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 No. All right, um, that was today's news and notes. Not a lot. Um, presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. It's time. I didn't really want to delay. <laughs> I didn't really want to, you know, we didn't need to add in any peripheral small news. We needed to get right into it because you've waited long enough. The tease, it's been long enough. It's time. Nothing you can take and change. Man, speaking of 10 years of my guys, we're still using the same clip from 10 years ago. <laughs> it's time to move forward. Uh, thank you. I mean, everybody that has chosen to listen today avoided seeing that graphic. But it's a, it's a throwback. It's the singular worst lip and mouth animation that has ever <laughs> been constructed oh, in no. the history of mankind. No. Oh. You see the way I was dancing? I mean, that's that's pretty much what I look like on a dance floor anyways. Oh, my goodness. It is time to jump in. And I feel like I want to get this one out of the way. It, it, it I don't think I saw a single human being guess my my guys without including him. So let's just do it. Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley. What? <laughs> I, oh, I'm shocked. This is unbelievable. Calvin Ridley is my singular favorite pick in every single fantasy football draft. He is the Mike Evans pick of this year where I had such incredibly strong conviction from day one on Mike Evans last year who ended up being drafted in the seventh round as the wide receiver 33 in drafts last season and ended the year as the wide receiver five. Calvin Ridley is being drafted in the seventh round this season as the wide receiver 37, and there isn't a draft I will go without taking him. He is, um, you know, I don't know what it is. He is, he is that proper age, and Mike Evans was this too. It's kind of the James Conner thing. You reach – reach a certain age and it doesn't seem like anything anybody says any circumstances will change how somebody views them um he signed the largest free agent contract of any wide receiver to a new team since 2016 so nfl general managers at least one really 
found Calvin Ridley to be a desirable asset to go and spend that amount of money. And there is so much doubt in the fantasy community about his ability to perform. Calvin Ridley would have been a my guy well before DeAndre Hopkins got injured. Oh, he was already written in Sharpie on your board. Yeah, this was chiseled, actually. I took a tablet out. You you ruined our whiteboard. You <laughs> With the Sharpie? With the chisel. It, it was really oh. unnecessary. <laughs> you could have just written it. I didn't it. chisel the whiteboard. All right, listen. Um, Calvin Ridley is just such an extreme value, and the parallels between the Evans story are just so ridiculous. When Even when you look at the problems that people had with Mike Evans last year, was it was Baker Mayfield. Mm -hmm. And I was able to come in here and tell you, like I have confidence that Baker Mayfield, for all of his flaws and problems, is a great deep ball thrower that takes shots down the field and is going to make the difference. That's what you have with Will Levis. He lets it rip. I mean, we've posted every single play from Will Levis in 2023. He had the highest average depth of target in the National Football League. And... These are going to be, I mean, this combo is going to be a match made in heaven. I have so much confidence in that. And now you have injuries to DeAndre Hopkins. The path is clear. If you want to get into the hype train, we had um, a beat reporter out of Tennessee. This was the quote. With every passing day of watching Calvin Ridley at Titans camp, the more confident I am, and I love this, that the Jaguars are morons. <laughs> <laughs> His usage last season was a fireable offense. They painted him into a little stupid box. And this is a player that you need to force feed the ball at every layer of the field, which they will do. The offense, Jason, you've talked a lot about Kellen Moore and the innovation and what you have confidence in with Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown in Philadelphia being more innovative. Brian Callahan is bringing over a Cincinnati offense where they will be in the shotgun, where their pass rates with Joe Burrow were top half, and then the last two years, fourth and second. This is not the Derrick Henry experience in Tennessee anymore. This is going to be what do we have in Will Levis and the type of games that they're going to win are going to be with letting Will Levis throw the football to a true number one in this offense. And Brian Callahan's come out and said, you're looking at a similar role to the one that Jamar Chase played in our offense. He has already proven he knows how to use a versatile number one receiver with a unique skill set, his average draft position is criminal. And, and Will Levis is a is a perfect combination for the downfield throwing. Will Levis does two things. He takes sacks without seeing pressure, and he throws the ball deep. He's a man. And he also has the, like, people are not affording him the chance to greatly improve with an offseason and a head coach that has been good with a quarterback before. And Ridley was, guys, Ridley was the RB was the wide receiver 17 last year yeah and He's it was being a, drafted at 37 and this was in an offense people are big mad they're big mad and they you know there were all those close plays mike keeps mentioning around the end zone like this was a player who last year was number two in the national football league in red zone targets what are we doing what are we doing please draft him everywhere it won't cost you much Think about it. You will be going more likely if you draft Calvin Ridley. This is a wide receiver three. Yeah, yeah. In your in your draft board, that I think has true. I think he has top twelve potential. I really do. With, with you think Levis can support? I mean, I, I guess I guess Baker do. supported. You know, Mike Evans last yeah, year. Yeah, and the, the pedigree. I mean, five, Evans but. has a much longer history of success, but Calvin Ridley, like, you got to remember, like, this was an elite, an elite option in Atlanta and then we've got one year back in Jacksonville where you had the elite games but inconsistency which has been a hallmark of Trevor Lawrence I would expect some inconsistency in Tennessee I'm not going to say that every game is going to this is not wide receiver five finish this is the best value in your draft so getting it out of the way the one you already knew was coming everyone's rolling their eyes into the back of their head but I Calvin Ridley to me is uh he's like the He's been locked for a long you, time. Your confidence in him has allowed me to really change. I, I remember you could go back and find early offseason where I said I'm out out on Calvin Ridley coming over to a team where you're not even 100% positive that he's the one with Hopkins there. He could, you know, Hopkins could be the one and he could be the two for Will Levis on a bad offense, um, changing teams at an older age. I was just out, out, out. 
as time has gone on, the drum beat obviously around the, the reporters about Calvin Ridley just being incredible there. He's the clear one. Now Hopkins is injured. And what is truly amazing is that there's not – like a lot of times we'll have this My Guy show. And, you know, not toot our own horns, but we, we see the ADP go up from some of these guys. People start <laughs> drafting them earlier. You, oh you can't do it. This guy. There's, well, no, I'm just saying that, that has happened many times. There's, there is <laughs> – it's not – I read many books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it in, in a bad way. Oh, I'm, my gosh. I'm simply stating facts, but there's nothing can that can happen. I barely hear you out of your own butt right now. <laughs> you smell that? <laughs> we all it smells do. smells like popcorn. Um, there's no way that Calvin Ridley's ADP can go up. It's no, just, I, I, I don't think it's possible. We don't have the power. No, no, not I've at all. tried for three months. No, I mean, it, it, he is he is going to stay exactly where he is, and, and where he is, I think, is a value. You're, you're grabbing him uh, as as someone that has potential, has upside, is a quality receiver, and you're drafting him around guys that are much more unknown commodities. All right, my guy number one in the books, Calvin Ridley. You saw it coming if you've been listening to this show. Who is going next here? I guess I'll hop in because I've got a guy that I don't think too many people are going to be surprised about either. So I will rip the Band-Aid off with this guy. Devon A. Chan. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love him. I love my little bitty Devon A. Chan. Um, <laughs> look, he is awesome. And I think there comes a time in every fantasy manager's existence where they have to look at themselves in the mirror mm -hmm. and ask an important question all right i'm looking am i a coward oh no am i a coward nobody wow, wow. okay nobody calls me chicken well that's the thing about devon h and this is a risky pick and when this is the my guys episode i had this thought a couple months ago um with making devon h and one of my my guys i am not necessarily telling you the way that andy told you that you should draft Calvin Ridley. I'm not saying you should draft Devon Achan. What I'm saying is I am drafting Devon Achan. I ain't a, no coward. I ain't no coward. This is a my guy. This is a risky pick. He got injured a couple times in his rookie year. He's undersized. He's in a crowded backfield. He is also probably the most electric and explosive player we have seen since CJ2K. He certainly has speed like that. I went and watched, and I'll post on Twitter after this episode is done, every single snap and target from Devon A. Chan last year. And there are pl just play after play after play where when he gets a little crease, you watch these defenders, and it looks like they're playing flag football because they're reaching for his waist as he is just out of their grip. He's unbelievably fast, and you can't stop it. After watching the film... There's only one other player in the entire NFL that is like him, and that's his teammate Tyreek Hill. He has yeah, they that, got some fast guys in. Uh, yeah, it is really not fair in Miami. Um, you look at his role. I think that's the worry, right? Is he going to get enough workload to be valuable at that you know two three turn or maybe in the middle of the second round where you're going to have to take him? Right now, he's listed as a co-starter with Mostert. On first downs last year, the Dolphins had two running backs on the field 48% of the time. Now, that's not just number one in the NFL. That is like, that hasn't happened since fullbacks were a thing. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're on the field together, and Devon Achan lines up all over. He lines up in the slot a ton. He is a great pass catcher. We'll get to that in a minute. But I want to focus on the fact that last year, in nine full games played, he was averaging 15 opportunities a game alongside Mostert. 15 opportunities a game. 85% of running back ones over the last six years have had 16 and a half opportunities a game or more. So you're telling me going from his rookie season to his sophomore season, he needs to get like one and a half more opportunities a game? Of course that's going to happen. You, you listen to how Mr. McDonald's, a.k.a. Mike McDaniel, a.k.a. the head coach of the Miami <laughs> Dolphins, um, talks about AKA. Devon H. <laughs> and... And, you know, he talks about how he's changed his body, he's changed his diet. He is integral, and everyone else on the team, the other players, are are relying on Devon Achan on most plays. I think he's going to be out there a ton. We know he's an explosive runner, but he's an unreal pass catcher. In college, if you don't remember or you didn't know, he caught 60 receptions in his final two years. Now, for context, because NFL, that sounds good, not elite, 
Uh, Bijan, Bijan caught 60 uh, receptions his entire college career. And I think we know what an incredible pass catcher he is. He was targeted on 24% of his routes last year, which is a great number for a wide receiver. And more importantly, Mike McDaniel utilizes him as a first read target in the offense. He was targeted on 67% of his targets as the first read. That was He was what the play design was for. That was number one in the NFL as a rookie. When you look at historical breakouts, the largest jump for running backs is year one to year two. That's where the, the massive explosion happens. It's also when they're in their age 22-23 season. All these things are aligning for Devon can I Can I ask you a question? I'll allow it. What if you are a coward? Then Ooh. do not – listen, oh. if you're a coward – Like if you know that about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fair question. Don't draft him. Okay. You can't handle it. But you. <laughs> but I'm just going to tell you right now, if you are a coward, there will be one or two potentially, maybe with trades or playoffs, three times a year where your cowardice is going to be pissing your pants because you're going to be <laughs> – facing him on the other side and you're gonna go oh daggummit that guy could put up 40 points on me is there a good running back for cowards to draft <laughs> is that or is that another show christian mccaffrey <laughs> i mean <laughs> i'd be i'd be okay gra grabbing him um no i okay. mean you know you if you want to play the non you know the coward way you're just gonna look at volume this is not volume this has to be explosive but he is explosive he led all running backs in yards per touch 7.7 .7 last year i'll post the film you could take a look yourself i I don't want to be out on this guy, and I think that if, if he is healthy, right, if he plays the full season, next year you're going to be talking about a guy who's a top three pick. That's that's his upside. Okay. Well, uh, had no idea you even liked him. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. a shock. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back with Mike's first My Guy. All right. Back from the break, and uh, it's time for Mike to reveal numero uno. My number one, my guy, I have stated on this podcast that he is absolutely the best quarterback to draft, all things considered, this fantasy football season. Kyler Murray. The Homer hater calls, get that bull crap out of here. Kyler is the best quarterback target in your drafts right now on sleeper he is going as the quarterback eight and here's the deal with Kyler he just turned 27 I have no age concerns about Kyler Murray running he is averaging over 20 20 fantasy points per game and 38 rushing yards now the 38 rushing yards I get it people out there might say well that that sounds kind of low well Guess what? Only five quarterbacks since the year 2000 have hit those marks. 38 yards a game on the ground? That's right behind Jalen Hurts. That's right in line with Cam Newton. That's right in line with Josh Allen. That's how much Kyler Murray actually runs. We forget. It's because, just under 700 yards a year. Yeah, we forget how great Kyler has been for fantasy football because we all have brains like goldfish. And if you haven't done it really recently – we tend to forget about it, and a, a year and a half, or close to two years of Kyler Murray's career was deleted from that ACL tear, but he is back, and he came back in a big way. The Arizona Cardinals, to start last year, were 1-8. and eight. They were putrid. They were one of the worst offenses in the league, and then Kyler comes back, and they're a top 10 offense, like immediately. And this is a team that was lacking. Top 10, huh? Yes. Wow. Top 10 in yards, top 10 in points per game, top 10 in plays. No Marvin Harrison. And this is with, look, Trey McBride was there. That was it. You know, it was rookie Michael Wilson who was, he was not ready to be a number one wide receiver. It, like, it's not his fault. But Kyler was able to take this team, this offense, and carry them because he is that good at football, and he is that good for fantasy football. We have some other bonuses that we love. Arizona is a fantasy-friendly offense. They went for two after scoring a touchdown 34% of the time. That's the highest in the NFL. That's Yeah, that's, baby. Yeah, that's, baby. That's a bonus, man. Bonus. Just a free two points, possibly, at the end of a touchdown? Like, that's sensational. He ain't getting nothing for an extra point. That is correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, leave that garbage to the kickers. 
They went for it on fourth down 27% of the time. Third highest in the NFL. Keep those drives alive. Those extra opportunities. Bonus. They, they really, yeah, they Bonus. really do add up. And last year, once Kyler got in, look, QB nine in points per game from week 10 on. Again, with that bad team. And that includes four games of over 20 points. And that was, look, last year, Kyler had a 3.7% touchdown rate. That's that's about a full percent lower than the league average. I don't blame him. He's not. He wasn't surrounded by talent. He's had multiple years. His sophomore year, four point seven, uh, a, a touchdown percent, a five percent. The following year, like it was for what Kyler is used to putting up on the field, it was not as efficient. He has, like, he doesn't have the dangers of the pocket only passers. C.J. Stroud could one hundred percent be the revelation and be a top three guy. But the path for things to go wrong for pocket passers is so gigantic where Kyler Murray, because he runs so much, you have a floor you and then you have a built-in upside of if Marvin Harrison is as great as we all think he's going to be, that's a number one wide receiver, a number one tight end. And on top of that, opportunity cost is almost everything in the fantasy football drafts, that ADP. Kyler's going in the seventh. Kyler's going as the QB eight. And he is, to me, safe and has massive boom potential. Yeah, but what if, hear me okay, out, all right. what if a couple rounds earlier I can grab Anthony Richardson and he could turn into Kyler Murray? <laughs> he, he he absolutely could. Anthony Richardson could turn into Cam Newton. The, it could. It could be a boat. Kyler Murray <laughs> is a boat. Kyler Murray just might be Kyler Murray. And we want to, look, we want hot stars. His odds are high, actually. We. They are actually they're probabilistic. It's a hundred percent hit rate that he is yeah. still Kyler Murray. We want a hot start in the first four weeks of the season. Their first three games right now, forty eight projected points. That's the that's the over under for those first three games. That is absolutely delightful. And in week four, when it's not forty eight, it's the Washington Commanders who are, by all accounts, they should be one of the worst defenses that we've seen in a very very long time. Kyler is absolutely, absolutely my target in all fantasy football drafts, and I like. I'm, they have no pass rush, right? They have no defense. Yeah, the, the defense is still going to be a work they in have, progress. They here. have one player in the top 100 right now, and Buda Baker. <laughs> like the the <laughs> offense, like the defensive web, um, you know, capability to slow people down. Like they're going to need to lean on the offense to get through. It is it is so wild to me that Kyler came back with. That Arizona Cardinals offense, which, again, I can't stress how bad they were through nine weeks. And then the quarterback comes in and puts up four 20-point games. That's outrageous. All right. Number two on my My Guy list. Uh, I'm going to tease it with a beat reporter quote. Oh, please be better than what Jason brought. Uh, he said, it does not take long to see and hear the difference from a sedan to a Porsche when the cars are passing. <laughs> and this player is not a sedan. Malik Neighbors. You're saying he's not a, like an affordable family car? He is not an affordable <laughs> family car. We are talking about the Porsche himself. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver of the New York Giants. It was June 1st when the UDK was released and we did an Explain Yourself segment. And, there, and I said a quote like, that there was a point in time where I thought Malik Neighbors would end up a my guy. He's ending up a my guy. And um, my confidence in his skill set and ability is tremendous, but I want this conversation and argument to be persuasive on the basis of convincing you that this can work in New York, okay? Yeah, that's the issue. Because I don't need to go and tell you about the collegiate numbers and the collegiate stats and the separation. He was drafted where he was drafted for a reason – Love that he lines up all over the field like a CD Lamb can. Um, I love that he crushes every kind of defense, man and zone. In fact, his numbers are better than Marvin Harrison against both of those. However, the question mark in everyone's mind around Malik Neighbors is going to be draft price and the time that he's spending in New York. And I want to tell you why. I mean, this is a chicken or egg situation. We talked about Daniel Jones and the numbers he's put up in the passing game. He's also had no true alpha, which is a big, big problem. There is There are 200 vacated targets on the 
already struggling Giants passing offense. And ar here arrives Malik Neighbors. You look at the ultimate draft kit and you look at the target share expectation for Malik Neighbors, okay? I got him at 25%. You guys have him at 27 and 28% of the team's targets, according to the UDK. Sounds about right. Over the last decade, 12 rookie wide receivers have hit a 23% target share, okay? So yeah, 23%, well, well yep. which I, I cannot imagine a healthy Malik Neighbors on the field under 23%. Me either. All 12 of them were double-digit fantasy points, okay? So you talk about some security. Per game. Double-digit fantasy points per game. Yeah, because it's not impressive at all if they did that <laughs> on a season. Finish, if you finished the season with, with double, double digits, fantasy points? That would be really bad. Right. No, I mean, That had, would be a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> no, per game. Okay, good. Their average fantasy points per game was 13.2. So if you're over 23% target share, you average 13.2 fantasy points per game. For context, Jamar Chase was at 13.3 last year. Okay? So when you get a target share as a rookie – it is exceptionally valuable. But then you say, well, the Giants, man, I don't I don't even want to watch them. They were kind of a surprise two years ago. Last year was trouble. Here's something exciting about those 12 wide receivers I talked about, the historical evidence. Okay. 75% were on teams that did not make the playoffs. Wow. 75% okay. okay. of those. They were on third and fourth place teams in their division. Okay. Same, neighbors, same with neighbors. Neighbors <laughs> is going to be in that boat. And – Rookie wide receivers and why making him a my guy is so exciting is that they are often league winners down the stretch. Of those 12 wide receivers, 75% of them increase their fantasy points per game over the final five weeks of the year because they get better, they become more integrated into the offense, and we're talking absolute stud territory. I am in on Malik Neighbors. I think you have a shot at a true alpha. If you're drafting on ESPN, the value right now is even greater. He's a mid to late fifth round selection. I being, like that. Being drafted at floor levels, like wide receiver 24 range. Jason just said A-chan and the possibility of where he'll go in next year's draft. Malik Neighbors, I think, could be a first round draft selection next year that you're getting in the late fourth, late fifth, depending on your platform, that you're taking behind some guys like Josh Jacobs and – you know, they have more question marks around volatility and explosive capability. Malik Neighbors, the player, tremendous confidence. The evidence of a rookie wide receiver drafted in that range, it's very, very positive when they get a target share. Could he be disrupted by an injury? That's always the case. We are, are my guys last year, we had, you know, three kind of yeah. home runs, and then we had two that were on their way. Mark Andrews got hurt. It's going to happen. Like it is walking the uh, the land, you know, going through the minefield, trying to get a my guy all the way to the end of the season sometimes. But if he stays healthy and he's on the field, this offense cannot function without this gentleman. So Malik no. Neighbors, I think the the possibility of a really really impactful season is there, and I'm willing to take him on all platforms and especially ESPN. I that what I hate about Malik Neighbors in fantasy football right now because I've I've been uh, of I think of the table, I've been the most concerned about his ADP. But the hopefully what's not coming through is I have no concern about his talent. I think that he is going to be an elite player. It's just the the risk of the ADP to me has been a point of like, oh man, I don't know. The the second half is the second half of the season is one hundred percent true. We see that all the time. So if if he gets off to a slow start, just hold on. And and one other thing I want to throw in, because I was looking at the uh, history of rookies over the last 10 years drafted inside that top 10 range. and you, in the, For the NFL in draft? In the NFL draft. And it's like they don't generally, like either they completely unmitigated bust, which is of small percentage, very small, like Corey Davis as a rookie, or they really kind of are going to outperform that ADP so you're you're kind of taking him knowing that it's not he's not going to end up where he's being drafted. That's very unlikely. There's only yeah, he's been, either not good or he's great. The only two that I could find that were kind of neutral to ADP were like like Devontae Smith was drafted at 36, ended at 29. Like that wasn't a okay. crazy, yeah, impressive rookie season. Um, Amari Cooper was at 20, finished at 22. Like, there were a couple guys in that category. I wonder what Corey Davis did. Corey Davis was ADP of 46, so you didn't spend it on him. Okay. 
He was a he was a tenth round pick. He ended up as ninety third best wide receiver. So that was a disaster. But you know, I, he was not highly drafted. I mean, Drake London was one, but he's a ninth round pick. So when you're drafted anywhere in this range, you don't really finish there. You end up, you know, with a yep. much higher finish. Jamar Chase was the wide receiver twenty six off the board. He was he ended as the wide receiver five. Waddle was forty one, ended at sixteen. Evans was thirty eight, ended at twelve. So. I think that that's the perfect kind of player you want to add to the roster where you're looking at that high upside. He is, regardless of, of if you're in on the ADP or you're out on the ADP, drafting Malik Neighbors is drafting to win your championship. Fair. Yeah, he's a talented, fun, explosive rookie, and those tend to work out in the NFL. All right, <sighs> my second my guy. I'm here. This is the one that I think people had the did hardest you say I'm here? time guessing. I might have. I don't oh, okay. I don't know what I say. <laughs> Where did you go? We've I, done, just, I wasn't is, questioning your current location. This is like episode 1600 and something. You know I, I have no idea what comes out of my mouth at all times. So shame on you, Andy. Sorry, that's on me. Am I here? Um, Are let's, any of us here? Let's kick it off with my second my guy, a running back. Isaiah Pacheco. Isaiah Pacheco Pacheco's a bunch of boxes. Oh, I thought for you were going to say Pacheco this out. They're both good. No, I was Swish. happy. I was happy. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. There are a couple of boxes I love. Pacheco for... those boxes. Pacheco Pache those boxes. Look, if you're too afraid to draft Devon A. Chan, if you are you the are... coward, oh, okay. then then Pacheco's a great option because I think he is being drafted at his floor. There are certain things that work in the NFL. For fantasy. One is being on a great offense. Two is being a good pass catcher as a running back. Pacheck. Pacheck. <laughs> Thank you. This is great. Oh, my Three, gosh. Three, it's when you are 215-plus pounds and run sub 4-4, four, four, the hit rate on that is outstanding. Pacheck. Pacheck. I want to read to you the – I've, I've talked a lot about how I think Kansas City Chiefs as a whole right now – are undervalued in ADP for what I think they're going to do in 2024. Here are the total points scored by the Kansas City Chiefs over the last five years. 451, 473, 480, 496, 371. Now, obviously, their defense was a little better, but that is an outlier. That is totally different than what you expect from the Kansas City Chiefs. And if I had to bet whether they're going to be in the 400s or the 300s, I think that is an, an, an unbelievably easy bet that I would push my chips all in on. So you've got a big-bodied pass-catching back for a great offense with Mahomes who they, they are good at getting running backs, receiving touchdowns. I want to remind you, Kareem Hunt, when he was in his second year as a running back one for the Chiefs, how, he's a great pass catcher. He how many, how many receptions do you guys think he had in? in that season we're going way Ooh. back way back i Green know this is rookie year? season is second year i'll go 50 40 something 50 40 23 23 Wait, what? and yep and he had seven receiving touchdowns on that because andy reed is so good at designing stuff like that from the shotgun 70 percent of pacheco's runs were from the shotgun six of his seven touchdowns were from the shotgun this is just a clever offense and he's a good back and the workload is there he had 18.1 opportunities last year at 4.6 yards of carry. So it wasn't just workload, it was efficiency. That's right. Tear that turf up. Pacheck. Um, he was seventh among all running back in red zone touches, and he was efficient. All running backs. Uh, all, all of them. All running back one. Um, inside the 10-yard line, he, he only had 10 carries inside the 10, but he turned that into five, five touchdowns. So that's a number that could go up. And if you look at what this team has done transactionally and said verbally, it is that Isaiah Pacheco is the dude. Over the playoffs, if it, where, where it mattered the, mattered the most and they won a Super Bowl, in the wild card round, he had 76% of the Kansas City running back opportunities. Divisional round, 84%. AFC Championship, 90%. And in the Super Bowl, 89%, including six targets. Also, just a little weird nugget, he's the only running back in NFL history to start and win a Super Bowl in his first two seasons. 
So he's just a winner. You that know, is, my guy's you a know winner. What? Okay. That's a great stat, man. I, that stat's crazy just because, man, you ended up in the right place, buddy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what what an amazing way to pick. start. Yeah. So they, they committed to him down the stretch, and then what happened in the offseason? They let 32-year-old Jarek McKinnon walk. They replaced him with no one but an undrafted free agent, Daenerys Prince. It's a fun little storyline, but that's not that's not a worry. They re-signed He's not a king. They no way. He's a prince. Um, speaking of a king, last year Isaiah Pacheco missed a few games on a per game basis. He scored uh, thirteen point seven fantasy points per game. That's a, that's identical to what Derrick Henry, King Henry, scored mm -hmm. last year as the running back eight. He's being drafted behind that this year. Yeah, where's he going? Right now, he's the running back 11. He's in the third round. I see, yeah, I see 12. Yeah, it depends on platform, 11, 12, 13. But that is his floor, 11, 12, 13. He is a workhorse back that's going to catch the ball. I, I mentioned this quote earlier, but I want to read it verbatim from Andy Reid because he was asked From about, myself. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was asked who's going to fill in the third down role that's been vacated by Jarek McKinnon. He said Pacheco is ready to handle all of that. Uh, He's good with uh -oh. the protections. He's good with the technique and the fundamentals. He can run all the routes. He's got great hands, and he does. He had 49 targets last year. He turned it into 44 receptions. He's a solid player. He's explosive. He's got a body that can withstand a, a big workload. And what would a year three – That uh, would be the fulfillment of a six-year wait in fantasy football from the last time that Kareem Hunt was a Kansas City Chief. Yeah. Because we've been waiting six years to, we have. to, to put him. somebody else in those shoes. And I'm calling it. This right. is going to be the year where he is a running back one. All right. Another quick break and back with the rest of the My Guys. Well, it's your turn, Mike. Sometimes players uh, are expected to do one thing and then they – don't come through on that fulfillment. And then the following year, everyone forgets how good a player actually is. Jalen Waddell. Jalen Waddell of the Miami Dolphins were entering year four. And they're, because of last year, I think there is a little bit of fatigue. Also, look, right, look it's the elephant in the room. He is the wide receiver, too, behind Tyree Kill. He is not Tyree Kill. But you know what? Jalen Waddle is really, really good. Remember this past year, all the hullabaloo about how sensational the rookie year of Puka Nakua was and just ever, like that last week Puka broke the uh, reception record for a rookie wide receiver? Mm -hmm. You know whose record he broke? Jalen freaking Waddle, like the guy, the guy just broke the record a couple of years ago. In year two, he leads the NFL in yards per reception, and he finishes as the wide receiver seven with Tyreek Hill on his team. Year three wasn't what we had hoped for, and yet his third straight year with a thousand yards season, he finishes the wide receiver thirty four. He only played in fourteen games, and yet. In points per game, he was right there with Chris Olave with only four touchdowns. Talking about Jalen Waddle, it felt disappointing. But then you can look look behind the scenes at the numbers because, again, while missing games for Jalen Waddle, he also had tons of games where he would be leaving uh, in and out because he would just he had these nagging injuries that his body just could not seem to recover from. It happens. But compare some numbers from 2022 when he was the wide receiver seven. To the last year, 2023, his catch rate went up five points. He was really close in yards per game. His targets per route run went up last year. His yards per route run went up. The big thing was the touchdowns. The touchdowns just did, they didn't happen to come for Jalen Waddle this past year. But that can absolutely bounce back when you have a quarterback who leads the league in passing yardage. Jalen Waddle is made for the the NFL offense of 2024. He absolutely destroys zone. While we're talking about concerns of, well, the, these quarterbacks, they can't seem to overcome uh, uh, with the, the two shell. You know, they're playing zone. They're stopping these guys. Jalen Waddle destroys zone. His 3.09 yards per route run against zone ranks fifth best amongst all wide receivers over the last five years. Two of those are, in fact, Tyreek Hill. 
And it's the question of, can these guys coexist? Well, Tyreek certainly can. He's been a top 10 in half the games that he's played with Waddle, which is 16 games. Waddle was a top 12 in five of those games. Again, this I'm not saying he's Tyreek Hill, but I'm saying that people forget how great Jalen Waddle is. Jay, you brought up the speed of Devon Achan. Mm-hmm. Jalen Waddle is just right behind him at four three seven. It's unbelievably unfair to Jalen Waddle <laughs> that one of the fastest men on the planet is the third fastest guy on his team. Fourth fastest by forty times. <laughs> who, who is that, Jalen? Mostert. Uh, oh, Mostert. Yeah. Piece? Oh yeah. my gosh, these Dolphins. Yeah. Looking over and Jalen rides at a four three eight. That slow guy. <laughs> Looking over the first three years of Jalen Waddle's career in a full PPR, he averaged more fantasy points per game in his first three years than Calvin Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins, Cooper Cup. Wait, averaged more what? Fantasy points per game. That's what I thought you might have said, but that didn't make sense with those names. I totally understand. It that. is a made up stat. Wait, say that again. Genuine. In a full PPR. In his, over the first three years, he's averaged more points per game than Calvin Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins, and Cooper Cup. And in fact, in that time span, he averaged the same as A.J. Brown. This is where Jalen Waddle he is. Was, he was drafted too high last year. Quite possibly. I think that that really was true. I mean, I think you were drafting him last year, and so the only possible outcome last year for Jalen Waddle was to be burned by him. That's what I believe. He's like, AD, he was, he was, his ADP was like, what, seven? Wide receiver, nine. A nine. I mean, that was... It was just expensive, yes. and that price has come down because people were disappointed relative to the price. Yes, and so it's a little bit of the post hype sleeper storyline. A little bit. Um, He's going as the wide receiver seventeen uh, over on the sleeper platform on and, average across platforms. Wide receiver nineteen. Yes, I mean say the we we've brought up the the platform comparison tool because over on ESPN, Andy, I think you mentioned was it Calvin Ridley's was much lower, much lower. Jalen Waddle. A fifth round pick right oh. now in ESPN. By the that's, way, that's ridiculous. Puka cheated. I mean, Puka had one more reception <laughs> than Waddle, and one extra game than Waddle had. Oh, that's not so. Fair. That's that's cheating. And and not only that. Well, to be but, fair, to, but I didn't. Be, they got him the record, and I think they pulled. Him yeah, right they out. pulled him right out. But it is true Just, that the he point, Yeah, but you went for a record. Waddle, you know. <laughs> the point I, being, all they're like Puka. Most receptions in, in, for a rookie in history. Jalen Waddle had that record. Yes, that's, no, who, I, you've that's been what in he on, can do. You've been in on him all off season. Oh, yeah, but let me ask you this, Mike: Who'd you rather have, Jalen Waddle or Z.D. Lamb? I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can move on now, Andy. <laughs> what did we do? What did we just talk about on the tips and tricks? Oh, get the, over oh. it. What was the number one rule? Get over it. It wasn't called Let get it over. Go. It was called start <laughs> fresh. Okay, all right. Are you ready okay. to move forward? Yeah, I got who, Waddle. Who, who clicked the button on that trade, Jason? Did Mike click the button? I clicked, Did I click the button? I thought you were telling me to move on because I clicked reject until it's part, you guys. It's part of moving on. All right. It's Start accountability. Fresh. Start All right. My third, my guy, before I get into it, I'm going to give you three players that were finalists. We have never done this before. Three players that are like, they were right on the edge for me. Cooper Cup got a little bit. Weary when you combine Stafford's, like everything hinges on Stafford. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the um, like the Jenga. You've been playing the, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like you pull that one, yeah, block out structural integrity, and it all comes down. down. But Cooper Cup, I think, is a value. DJ Moore, I'm just gonna say the name. He was a finalist, and then um, the most left field one was Brock Bowers. I really believe that he may be utilized in a wide receiver. Uh, just as a wide receiver so often that you're, you'll are you be very happy with the pick. But my third and final my guy, it's been a journey, a long journey with this guy, but I think he's the steal of your draft. Tank Bigsby. Tank uh, Bigsby? What? <laughs> you, Andy, that's, you, tell us why. How Tank, did this work? Tank tell, Bigsby. It is not. The long con. Oh my it gosh! Is so not, why is he son, the best value in the draft? You son of a gun! That, this is not. I can't believe this works. Yes, it is not Tank Bigsby. Wait a minute, Andy. <laughs> no. Wait a minute, Andy. I have a golden ticket that says I could change your opinion here. So maybe... you cannot pick my my guy. <laughs> All right. Oh, you sons of guns! The button. The right. button said something different. <laughs> yes. Eat oh, it. all right. Do you have a real button for me? Thank you. 
Jaden Daniels. High five. Oh, I can't believe yeah. that Swish. worked. <laughs> Jaden Daniels. Just above Tank Bigsby, guys. Jaden Daniels <laughs> is my third, my guy. Wow, you pulled that off so perfectly. I have, uh, because we are in uh, in Phoenix, in Arizona, the Jaden Daniels story for me, it's a long story. It's a long story. He was a starting quarterback for Arizona State for many years before he transferred. I watched him play football. He was always, uh, you know, he's a great quarterback for Arizona State relative to what we've had out here. But at no point during that journey at ASU did I say, this is going to be a future top five NFL draft pick that's going to change the game. You said very opposite things. Yeah, I, well, I mean, it, the point was really that I thought he was kind of a m mid guy, just a mid quarterback. Um, good for ASU, probably not an NFL player. He transfers to LSU, and he has a senior season, a Heisman season, that was parallel to what Joe Burrow did in a lot of ways. Joe Burrow was insane. He was 60 touchdowns, 60 interceptions, or 60 touchdowns, six interceptions. That's unbelievable. Which, when I looked it up again, I was like, what? Yeah, that's crazy. That's a mistype. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, someone put that in wrong. Jane Daniels went 40-4. and four. Touchdown to interception ratio at LSU. And the storyline with him going into this draft, it really is about it's about Jaden Daniels, the player, and some of the things that make him special. But it's also about fantasy scoring and some of the things that make that special if you run the football. And I want to focus in on a, an interesting number with Jaden Daniels, who's going in the 10th round, by the way. The price on Jaden Daniels right now is the price on Anthony Richardson last year as a rookie. The price on Anthony Richardson right now with um, two games played in his career is five rounds higher. I will never draft Anthony Richardson. I'm not going to do it. Jane Daniels is your discount Anthony Richardson this year. And at, in college, he was 43% of his team's rushing yardage. That is the third highest ever for a first-round running back. But here's what's really interesting. He had the highest scramble rate of a college quarterback in their final season over the last decade. Scrambles are what we call undesigned runs. They're not, you're not doing a designed quarterback run. And in fact, in fantasy, wildly enough, last year, a scramble was worth two and a half times the, fan, oh, yeah. the fantasy oh, yeah. points of a designed quarterback run. The commanders gave up 65 sacks. It, that was the highest in the league. Now, he has to stay healthy. Yeah, what was his ragdoll percentage? His ragdoll was 100%. It was, a, <laughs> oh, it was 100%. Man. Oh, He's man. one of the first ragdoll every play. He needs to attach the helmet to the shoulder pads to make sure that the, <laughs> that it stays on. The head, his head yes. needs to be attached. The commanders gave up a lot of pressure. And a scramble run by a scrambler is worth double a designed run, which we expect design runs to be part of the Anthony Richardson experience five rounds earlier. Um, he averaged. You know, according to us, our average projection for him is 109 rushing attempts. That puts him six at the quarterback position. And I think looking at the college stats, we all could project higher. It's just kind of yeah, you, irresponsible you, to do. Right. But Jaden Daniels at the value, he's got Cliff Kingsbury. has been brought up before, who's had great success. Kyler was the quarterback seven with Cliff Kingsbury. As a rookie. As a rookie. And that was with 20 passing touchdowns. This is not... A my guy because Jaden Daniels is going to break the NFL and throw 35 touchdowns as a rookie. This is, you can throw 20 and you can scramble and you can end up the quarterback seven while you're being drafted as the quarterback 15. I also want to point out, you know, Drake May scrambles, right? There isn't a wide receiver in that offense right now today that you can look at and say that is in alpha. That's your Malik neighbors. That's your, you know, yes. go-to wide receiver. And despite the struggles and the way fantasy players feel about him, just watch football. You have to watch football to know it. Terry McLaurin is a true number one wide receiver at the NFL level who's been dealt a 1,000 quarterbacks and offensive coordinators, and it hasn't panned out to that season that breaks fantasy. But this is not Drake May. You have a number one in Terry McLaurin, no matter whether they're figuring out what their number two is. <laughs> You know, they have tight ends that can play football. They have uh, Austin Eckler out of the backfield that can help you out. And the fantasy community we've talked about, they've gotten smarter and smarter and smarter about drafting these quarterbacks and finding them late in drafts. They are blind and missing yeah. right now on Jaden Daniels. 
I know you guys agree. They, 100%, 100%. It was our pick in the mock draft yesterday. What late. a great pick. It, it really was. Uh, not to toot your own horn. No, no, I would never. Um, but this is the only guy round nine or later that has the rushing upside. And to me, this is this is the player I would be actively going into my draft saying, I'm going to build an amazing roster and then I'm going to take Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I mean, even if, if I take him in the ninth, even if I want to make sure I make sure I get that guy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I I I agree with you. I mean, it's funny because we've talked about a lot of this this off season. You know how you want those mobile quarterbacks. You want the ones that are dual threat. They're not just runners, but they could pass well. And so we've got Kyler and Jaden Daniels as my guys, and those are my two primary targets. You know, if I you, don't if I don't end up with a Jalen Hurts or Josh Allen, then then those are the two guys I want on my team. You guys. See, Jason, you told me to share some of my finalists before I revealed Jaden Daniels. Yeah. I now believe you you wanted me to do that, to set up your Tank Bigsby drop. Oh, I didn't, but that's... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That would be... Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. All uh, right, Jason. Just I, I am in 100% of agreement uh, of with Jaden Daniels. Oop, voice crack. But Jaden Daniels... Try whistling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and this is... I think Kyler's the best quarterback target in fantasy football. That's not going to stop me legitimately. That will not stop me from taking Kyler and then a couple rounds later taking Jaden Daniels because the, the price is so cheap. That's that, what Richardson was for people last year, yes. his second selection. Yeah, yeah. if, if Jaden Daniels is in your 10th round. If you're in the 10th round and you already have your quarterback, grab Jaden Daniels. Yeah, like the, the sleepers that we're looking at in the 10th round, of course, it – Hitting on those players, it, if it's a wide receiver or a running back, it is it feels so so good. But it's looking at the probability of who's actually going to hit in the tenth round at that position. It's really low for everybody. Meanwhile, Jaden Daniels has the cheat code built in, and he can throw like this. This is not this no. He is, is a this that was the point Tebow. with the forty and four at LSU is that Burrow came in as an established passer, and Jaden Daniels can he can sling it. Yes. All right. I guess it's time for my list of finalists, those who did not make. A lot of people thought uh, DK Metcalf was going to be on there because I'm higher than ADP. I do think he's a good value. He wasn't really in consideration. Yeah, he, he kind of, I feel like he, you and him had a relationship for about like a four-weeker. I mean, I, a fling. I still think he's a good value, but I, you know, he's, he's just a slight value at where he's going. He's not someone I'm thoroughly excited about. I don't think he's going to be one of those players that just absolutely wins your league for you. So my, my two main finalists were... I was very close to going Devontae Smith. The whole offseason, very, very close. And I would have loved to go with Ladd McConkey if it wasn't for the offseason recent health issues of Herbert and Ladd McConkey. Right. Uh, they just make it a little too spicy. But we should then, actually finally see him on the field this week, they said. Yes, they, they, are, they are both back. I think Herbert was out of the boot. That's great. I believe in those players still. But it was the opposite. That happened. There was a guy I was just so madly, madly in love with, and there was only one worry I had this whole off season was whether or not he was going to be healthy from a week thirteen injury, and we saw in the preseason, baby, my guy, Tank Dell, Nathaniel Jasper Tank Dell Jr. Mm, that's a mouthful of awesomeness. Um, look, he's the second year wide receiver for the Houston Texans. He finished last year as the wide receiver 38, but in only 11 games yet. He had as many top 12 performances as Devonte Adams or Brandon. Ayuk had, and they played the entire season. He was going to be a league winner. There was a moment last year, um, where independently Andy and I had not talked. We had not shared with each other our love and our belief that he was going to be a league winner, and we both went out and tried to trade for Tank Dell midseason. Andy actually got him. I was sad. He was happy. Obviously, he got injured and, and was not the guy yet, but he has the chance to be this next year. Now, he was injured in week 13. Be, well, I'm going to talk about his injury concerns in a bit, but before that, that time. That sucked so bad. It did. He was cruising. He was cruising. Yeah. So fun to watch. You want to know how he was cruising? Before that injury, he was the wide receiver 10 in points per game. He was between Jamar Chase and DJ Moore as a rookie. But but Nico Collins and Stephon Diggs are there. Yeah. Voice of public opinion. Yeah. 
Well, when Nico and Tank were both on the field, because Nico had his own injuries, in those games where they both were on the field, Tank had a higher target share, he had a higher air yard share, and a higher fantasy points per game average. So it is not outlandish to think that at the end of this season, Tank Dell could be the number one. Don't hear what I'm not saying. I love Nico. Hear what I am saying. I'm, I'm not super into Stephon Diggs. Um, but 72% of Tank Dell's receptions went for a first down or a touchdown last year. He was important. He was awesome. And for such a small wide receiver, he was not utilized that way last year. Okay, 60% of his targets were 10 plus yards down the field. You think of him as like, oh, is this like a screen manufacturer guy? He had one pass the entire year. It was behind the line of scrimmage. 70% of his snaps were out wide, and you watch in three wide receiver sets this preseason, you saw Stephon Diggs coming into the slot. That's where I think he belongs at this stage of his career, and I think he opens the field up even more. I've said it a million times. I, I tweeted out every uh, every target from Take Dell earlier this year. I don't know in the modern NFL – I don't know how you stop Tank Dell. I watch it. I'm just like you can't. You can't really well, stop. I, I actually do know the answer. Tell me. You have him block. You have him block on the goal line. <laughs> oh yeah, deep down in and, yeah. and have yeah, Damian you want. Pierce roll up on your own teammate. Um, so is he really going to take the next step? That's the question, right? Well, yeah, there I are, think we all like him, but that's yeah, we a, all that's like a good him. Question. There's only seven rookie wide receivers over the last decade who have averaged 60 uh, receiving yards per game and 15 yards per reception and had seven touchdowns. That list is Mike Evans, Juju Smith-Schuster, who was great early in his career. I know he's a joke now after injury. Terry McLaurin, A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and T. Higgins. And he did that in 11 games played. The next year for all six of those guys, the next year all of them increased their receiving yards by a lot. Double-digit receiving yards per game increase. The C.J. Stroud offense, don't be surprised if he hits 75 yards per game in this offense. And so then the only question is, but that dude's going to get injured again. He's tiny. Labeling someone as injury prone is not logical, and our injury expert and licensed physical therapist, Matthew Betts, cringes. He dies a little bit inside every time someone labels someone as injury prone. But the injury last year in week 13 was a fractured left fibula when they were bringing him in I've done that. to block and Damian Pierce rolled up on his leg. It was a freak accident. Get that man some milk. And you know what? He seems like he recovered well. He looked great in preseason. He's yeah, back it was, big touchdown. It was nice to see one big play in preseason to just kind of like if you were getting, you know, if you weren't sure you wanted to make the commitment, that was that was it. That was yeah. the great gesture. No, I literally was like, man, you know, I, I, I'm in on Tank Dell. But I haven't. I feel like we haven't heard a ton about the injury and the mm -hmm. recovery. And is he gonna? And it was like that day. Then Tank Dell has the huge touchdown. I'm like, oh, he's playing and he's good to go. And he looked exactly okay. how he looked. He gets open in space and then makes guys miss. But regarding the injury, the last time Tank Dell got injured was September first of two thousand eighteen when he was a freshman at Alabama. Between that freshman year and week 13 last year, he played in 59 games in college and NFL. He played 2,472 snaps without an injury. Okay, and it's I not. I was not. I was personally not worried about an injury. Well, I think if if he's not injured, he's going to have a Alabama lot of big &M, games. By the way, what's that? Alabama A&M. Just... Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, he was not. Uh, oh, it's uh, like, wait, what? Yeah, he played at Bama. Um. Yeah, and if you want to go back to high school. No, I'm kidding. I didn't, oh, I didn't go. I didn't, thank I didn't goodness. Go. Oh, Put a ball on school. it. But, yes, the, the point is this was an exceptionally talented rookie. He is being drafted later than I think he should be. He's going after Zay Flowers. Apparently, we all need to be drafted on ESPN. That's where a lot of these guys are huge values. He's going between Evan Ingram and Kyle Pitts, tight ends in those middle rounds that usually don't pan out. Or you could take Tank Dell, a second-year wide receiver, who was boss as a rookie going with a great offense. Great quarterback. Yeah. Great quarterback oh. and steps forward. And I didn't even bring up the love, the love that C.J. Stroud has for Tank sure. Dell. That man is in love with Tank Dell. All right, thanks, Jason. <laughs> Mike, nice. wrap it up. Uh, so I will throw out the, the one Boston. finalist. Yeah, thank you. Okay. The one finalist that I had, it was Nico Collins. Mm -hmm. But my love for Nico Collins is... It's already well known. It's well known throughout yeah. the land, so I wanted to make sure that people know that I really like this player. 
<laughs> Tank Bigsby. Uh, <laughs> Tank Bigsby, who is actually my guy. Now uh, play the real one. <laughs> James Cook. Oh, that came through because I was lamenting, Jason, <laughs> yeah. as you were talking. I was messaging messaging the guys. I'm like, we, we should have sh- taken Bigsby, Jason. It would have got oh. him. It would have got you so good. Once you said that, I was like, we just got to do uh, it. Unfortunately for you, I was prepared for that to happen. Yeah. James Cook, running back of the Buffalo Bills, going right now as the running back 14 on the sleeper platform. And here's the thing. In today's NFL, the way that running backs are used, yes, Volume is still the king of fantasy football at the running back position, but there's about three guys that you know. Well, this is this is a three down guy. It you, Christian McCaffrey, Brees Hall, Bijan Robinson. Those are the only three guys we feel confident going into the season that it's just they're going to be heavy yeah, on the workload. Like three of the top five picks, which is why those guys are are easily in the first round. After that, you want guys who have opportunities, but who are also efficient last year James Cook was an efficiency monster number one in yards before contact among all running backs over 1500 yards from scrimmage third most in the NFL behind Christian McCaffrey and Brees Hall he finished as the running back 12 despite only two rushing touchdowns we saw a huge shift last year for the Buffalo Bills between the first half and the second half they started with Ken Dorsey from weeks one through ten, they were five and five. They moved to Joe Brady over the second half of the season, and they go six and one. And a huge part of that change was their pass percentage. They Ken Dorsey, they were letting it rip. Joe Brady, their passing percent dropped down to thirty first. Now I don't expect that to stick down at thirty first, but the point being, Joe Brady is a guy who likes to run the ball. This is high T stuff. And James Cook is absolutely their guy. In those splits over the first half, James Cook was like a 15 opportunity, uh, 15 opportunities per game type of guy, putting up over just 10 fantasy points per game. That jumps to nearly 17 points a game and 20 opportunities per game, and not just on the ground. The targets per route run went from 14% up to 26%. And speaking of that 26% for more context, that's elite. That's Bijan Robinson levels of targets per route run. The Bills have vacated 284 targets because they sent their number one guy, Stephon Diggs, and some other pieces. And their number well. two guy, Gabe Davis. Gabe, Gabe Davis. Davis. They're no longer on the team. And while we want Keon Coleman, the exciting first round or first round rookie wide receiver, we want the Khalil Shakir, the hope for the later round guy. We want them to step in. We have seen over history that. Yeah, that happens a little bit, but the running back position, they're the ones who often see a bump, and that's a lot of targets to filter out that James Cook can absolutely be involved in. Inside the 10, that's the big concern. Like I said, running back 12 despite only two rushing touchdowns. He still had 18 carries inside the 10. Like That sounds like just it's a little bit of bad luck for a guy who was so efficient, leading the lead in yards, uh, before contact, you got uh, offensive coordinator Joe Brady talking about the short yardage, and this is the big one. I feel confident with Jimbo, which is James Cook's nickname, all the way down to its third and one. They're fine. They're fine with, with him being the short yardage running back. I think that the rushing touchdowns, it's an anomaly. If those come up and he continues his efficiency, he is, he is the player who I think can really surprise despite being in that typical dead zone for running I backs. think that the Bills have made it very clear that they are ready to give James Cook the work and make him their Bijan, CMC, Brees back. And I don't think that the fantasy community is ready to accept that as a possibility. Because and I think that's the disparity in draft. Right, because he's undersized. Correct. And, look, some guys are just – they're undersized, but he was – a second round pick. His rookie year was was bad for fantasy football. So I think that that the, the shine of him being a second round pick wore off too quick. If you mm-hmm. call five point seven a carry as a rookie bad, I yeah. mean, I, I mean, yeah, I just cumulative. Mean, I mean, fantasy football it didn't work out. He great player that was known. 
We just needed those opportunities to go up. You gotta do the cooking by the book. You know you can I was easy. I was looking for that drop earlier. <laughs> I really was. That's funny. Um, so so his ADP to me is where's it at again? He is going at the four oh seven RB yeah. fourteen. Yeah. Yeah, it's and, a great it's a great option. I I absolutely love this fully endorsed. He, this, this he was actually on my short list as well for a while. But he was. I, was just, I didn't want to bring him up before you brought up the my guy. But I, this is a guy who was uh, the running back eleven last year with two rushing touchdowns. Yeah, and you're like, oh, he's not going to get touchdowns. So what? I mean, who cares? <laughs> what if he gets six? What if he gets six rushing touchdowns? I did stumble on something very funny, and that was like a show doc from four or five years ago with a lot of Joe Brady hype and excitement when he was the <laughs> offensive coordinator in Carolina. So hopefully it works out better in Buffalo. Yeah. But this team has a lot of question marks on how the offense is going to function. Their defense is going to struggle a little bit, I think. And, um, you know, James Cook has three down workload potential. He has a potential, yeah. and it's he is good. Like That's, I, I think, a key for my three, my guys here. This is These are not just opportunity guys these are extremely talented players that just need a need a little bit more luck in a certain area so there you have it all of our my guys if you want to share your own my guys with us over on x uh use the hashtag my guy and let us know who you like and who your favorite maybe was of today's picks uh, next week we're going to have a breakouts and sleepers and busts and values episode and uh, we'll be live on Saturday in Los Angeles. The live show at Palace Theater, ballerslive.com for tickets, it is recording. Um, the event is Saturday night, and then uh, we'd love to see you there. We've yeah. got a, a live Q&A and a big celebration and some surprises yeah. for you. Pre presented by our friends at Sleeper and Pristy Knox. A part of those surprises is it's signed gear, including a grand prize. That look, you got to be there to win it. Yes, we will be throwing way too much signed gear into the crowd <laughs> and so please come and join us ballerslive.com grab a ticket and then the udk for life live stream is this afternoon at 6 p.m eastern 3 p.m pacific get your udk now it's not too late ultimate draft for that so hopefully you enjoyed the show that is going to do it for today's episode but there's more coming and football is it's inching closer cannot wait Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.